Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Jamie Chadwell Show here at North Greenville University, where Christ makes a difference. I'm your host, Fred Battenfield, and this is the Crusader Sports Network. Well, Coach, it's an open week, and your team has had a little time to rest and a chance to practice to get ready for Clark Atlanta. I mean, that's a pretty bit obvious that your team has made some remarkable progress since game one. We have. I think you go back and, and, and from the Marshall game to the point, um, past the past game, University of Charleston, we've made huge strides in our program. Unfortunately, it's not showing up on the on the uh, on the scoreboards on game days. But uh, as coaches and people that understand the game of football, uh, and if you come and see us play, you can see the the, the, the progress that we've made in offense, defense, and special teams. So I'm pleased with with that because as a coach, the bottom line is is you look have you made have you gotten better from when you started to where you at, and we have, and uh, and I think it's setting uh, what we're doing is going to set the foundation for what we're going to become. Well, that progress was very evident against the University of Charleston. Your offensive execution was very, 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 very sharp last Saturday. Yeah, we got we got better in that area. That's that's uh you know if you've seen obviously you've watched us the whole year, a place that we we've, we've struggled has just been execution on offense and being consistent. I felt like uh, you know we did a lot of great things uh, against Charleston um, and just couldn't just couldn't get it over the hump when we need to when we got down there really close to score in the red zone. Well, that, that was the biggest shortcoming, seemed to be the inability to put the ball in the end zone. Down in the red zone three times, had a chance to just kick a field goal and score some points and maybe put some pressure on them and change the uh, the momentum of the game a little bit. We did, yeah. The first time we get down there, uh, we got a we got a, uh, a pass that, you know, we have a great chance to catch maybe for a touchdown. We don't make that play, then we miss a field goal. Next time you're down there, uh, you know, you get a turnover, and then the last time we're down there, uh, going in, getting ready to go in the fourth quarter. You know, you're down 21-7, getting ready to at least at least attempt three points. You know, if we don't get it, and so, and that's that's part of the growing process as as your offense matures. We, we went back and looked, and you know, we, we still have no senior starters and only one junior starter on that offense. The rest are freshmen, and sophomores. So, um, you know, it's one of the first times they've really been in that type of situation when the pressure was uh, was there and we're in a tight game and stuff. And so, uh, as a coach, you you know, you chalk it up and say, hey. What can we learn from it? And I think our kids watching the video and, and how we practiced uh, this week, how we've been practicing, uh, they're learning from it, you know, and, and uh, I feel confident we won't make that mistake again. Well, North Greenville fans have to remember that was not an easy team. That was the number 11th ranked team in the country in the University of Charleston. You played the number two team the week before that. So North Greenville is playing an extremely difficult schedule. We are. It's, it's been a, it's a very ch uh, challenging schedule. Uh, you know, as we try to tell our team, hey, you, you want to measure up against the best, and, and we have done that. Marshall's ranked in the top of the country. Wesley's ranked in the top of the country. Gwen gets ranked in the top. Everybody we've played uh, has been, for some reason, every time we play them has been ranked in the top 25. So uh, the schedule makers aren't doing as much of a favor here. But, uh, you know, I think it, it, it'll end up helping our program in the long run because of we know what we need to do to get to that level. And I think our kids realize that. Uh, you know, as a, as a coach your first year and for your seniors, uh, you wanted to go out uh, and let them go out on a better note than what we've done so far. But it's what we keep preaching to them is you're laying the foundation uh, for what this program is going to become. This is your legacy. And by playing hard, never quitting, fighting, playing against the best, and proving yourself, that's going to lead more of a foundation than if we went and played teams that weren't very good and, and were beating them all. Well, one part of your offense that was very obviously much, much better were your wide receivers. Marcus Middleton and Nick Williams had really big games against Charles. They did. We tried to get them involved early because uh, those two guys on offense have some uh, specific skills that uh, allow them to be successful. And, and I was real pleased with the way that they ran the ball, they blocked, they threw the ball to them. And, and they both had really solid games. And hopefully they're both young. Nick's a freshman, Marcus a sophomore. I think it gave them some confidence that uh, they needed to hopefully take their game to the next level. Any other players you'd cite during that game that had a particularly standout effort? Well, I, I think, you know, you have to give uh, – I thought we moved the ball pretty well offensively. I think you have to give a lot of credit to the offensive line. Um, the five guys that played were Jordan Floro, Jonah Dorling, James Turn, Asa Wright, and, and Chancellor Hudson. Those are our five guys that been playing quite a bit. And I think they're getting better as a group. And uh, anytime you get better up front as a group um, – you know, positive things will happen. We still got ways to go everywhere on offense, trust me. But I thought, you know, they did some, did some positive things. And, and then defensively, obviously, kept us in the game. Um, you know, Nathan Batcher had an interception. Andre Bernardi had a sack for a fumble. Nick Rosamonda had a, a fumble recovery, and he also forced it. So I thought those guys had good games. And, um, you know, and it's young guys that are stepping up and doing some positive. So that, that's exciting for our future. 
Well, Coach, you got a little time to rest this week, and, and what kind of things are you working on in practice with that extra weekend? We're trying really right now. You want to get better. When you go on an off week, you want to try to get better at fundamental things. You know, uh, I thought from last week, obviously, 0-3 in the red zone, so we're, we're heavy in the red zone this week, just working red zone stuff. Hey, when we're down there again, what are we going to do different? Um, tackling. You know, our defense, I know, felt like they missed some tackles that were – uh, that they could have made some plays on, so we put a big emphasis on this week and just really trying to work, hey, how do we tackle going through the fundamentals? And so trying to get our guys better fundamentally so when those opportunities come again, they'll be ready for them. Well, Coach, I know one thing you've got to be proud of is that people keep saying your team is sticking with it. They're not giving up. They are. I, I think, you know, that's one when we when we first took over and the strike to stone model came in. Uh, you know, as coaches, you you know what type of team you got after you went through it. And then we, when we look at our schedule, we know what type of schedule we're playing. So we, we knew it was going to be tough going uh, early on. And we wanted something to build on and say, hey, no matter what you do in football and life, you're going to get hit in the mouth. There's going to be trials. Uh, you know, Jesus promises that in his word. We're going to have trials. It's how you respond to them. And, and that's what we're trying to teach our, our young people is you got to give everything you can because you just never know um, when that struggle's going to break. And, uh, and I'm, very, I'm pleased, and our coaching staff is pleased with because our kids, their effort has just been outstanding. Because they, they know when you're at North Greenville and you're representing Jesus Christ, people are watching. And all we can give to him is our very best. And I'm, I'm pleased that we're doing that every day. That's exactly right. Well, you would encourage the fans to uh, to send you players, encouragement, and especially money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Any guy, you know, any of we're, all, we're out uh, recruiting is obviously the lifeblood of any football program. Um, and so we're uh, looking forward to getting to that and trying to bring some new guys into there. And, uh, also financial support will always help, you know, that. So uh, when you're at a Division two school like ourselves or a great institution, any, any uh, type of money goes a long way. So uh, a little shameless plug there from Fred and myself right there. Absolutely. So, we want people to, to definitely support North Greenville football by sending those checks and <laughs> cards and letters as the old uh, TV shoes to go. Right, right. Well, Coach, enjoy this week off. I know your team is working extremely hard. They're on the road a week from this coming Saturday, October 31st, at Clark, Atlanta, for a 2 o'clock kickoff down in Atlanta, Georgia. Next home game is November 7th. That'll be Military Appreciation Day when the Crusaders take on UNC Pembroke. For Coach Jamie Chadwell, I'm Fred Battenfield, and this is the Crusaders Sports Network.